This is Coach Lee, and I'm going to talk to you about anxiety being artificial and how that can help you. The knowledge of that can actually help you and how you can turn it back to what you should feel naturally in the situation that you're in. Before we get started, just know that I am not saying that every situation is artificial. Sometimes there are things that you should be afraid of, that you should have anxiety over. There are bad things that happen in life, but I'm talking more to those situations where it just seems like nothing should be wrong, but there is. You're anxious and you don't even know what it's about, or you're anxious over something and you need to think about it differently because that's how you're going to get through it. That's how you're going to get the result that you want. Maybe you've heard of Dr. Livingstone, who was a great traveler of the world. He was an explorer. He saw things that most of us will never see. He went through uncharted territories and he had amazing experiences. And there was one time he actually reported that he was attacked by a lion. And he notes that it was so odd to him looking back because he did survive it. Looking back that during this lion attack, he did not feel afraid. He said he laid there while the lion actually bit into him and clawed at his skin. And he said, I didn't feel afraid. And he wasn't sure why that was. Now he did survive the attack. And part of it is because the lion did not sense that he was alive as much as he could have because Dr. Livingstone wasn't moving around. He wasn't acting like someone who was scared. And what's more, since his heart rate was not up and his blood wasn't pumping as much, he was better off with the wounds that he had because the chance of him bleeding to death was less. So there were multiple things going on in this event. But the question is, why did he not feel afraid? Because most of us, if a lion is approaching us and we realize we're about to be attacked by this lion, terror would probably be what we feel. But he didn't feel any of that. Was he superhuman? No. Was he an expert in dealing with anxiety? I don't know. But it at least shows that it's possible, even in the face of something terrible like that. And so the real question is, how can we get to that point? So I want to point out something you have probably experienced. Have you ever had a nightmare where something terrible is happening to you or someone you love and you wake up from it? And at first you think it's real. And so your heart is racing. You're probably sweating. You feel terror in your stomach, anxiety to say the least. And then you have that realization. It was just a dream. It was just a nightmare. And that's one of the greatest feelings in life, in my experience, is when you realize that those terrible things aren't happening, that maybe your loved one is right next to you, or maybe they're just down the hall, or at least they're not going through the situation you think they were, or you're not because you wake up and look around and realize that monster is not there. To go from one extreme to the other is such a wonderful feeling because you appreciate so much more the boringness, the simplicity of not having to face that terrible thing. And a lot of times we're just able to feel this peace and go back to sleep and even feel better than we did before. Some people struggle with feeling like it's real a little bit longer, but most people report that there is relief in realizing it was just a dream. It wasn't real. It was artificial. It was a figment of my imagination. So you can get to that place. And so the real question here is, how do you get to that place when you're going through anxiety, especially when it doesn't seem like you should be having anxiety? Like maybe you're going out with your friends. Maybe your day is just starting or maybe you're dealing with some significant challenges. But when you add anxiety into it and you make the situation worse, you end up having at least a certain element of artificial anxiety, especially when it comes to questions. So, for example, with Dr. Livingstone, he knew the lion was coming. There was no question. It wasn't like, I hope I don't get attacked by a lion today. And having anxiousness about that, the lion was coming. There was no doubt. And for a lot of us, though, we see it as, I hope the lion doesn't come, or maybe there's a lion coming, or is there a lion coming? And we feel anxiety about that. And so that's where reminding ourselves, even saying, it's just a dream. It's just a nightmare about these things, because that's what you're experiencing. It's like having a nightmare during the day or night when you feel fear and uneasiness, nervousness, and anxiety about things that you can't control, that you don't know what's going to happen, or even when there are things that really are not bad things for you, like maybe social anxiety, where you're just afraid to go out with a group or be in crowds and interact with people, and you feel anxiety about it when usually a lot of people 
have peace when they begin to understand that most of the people you're around, you know, they're not wishing bad things on you. They're not trying to make you feel uncomfortable. They don't really care that much to be at a point of analyzing you or being critical of you or being mean to you. And if you are around people like that, you don't need to be and you need to choose different people to be around. But if you can think of this in terms of trying to determine which part of it is the nightmare or the dream that you could feel relief about and which part of it isn't. And that's where it's so powerful, where, as I've mentioned on some of the other videos here on my channel, My Anxiety Peace, it's very, very helpful and powerful to make a list of your plan and the positive information you have. And so, for example, if you're dealing with a breakup, if you have a plan, maybe you've seen some of my videos on my other channel where I talk about people using the no contact rule and other things that can actually help to bring an ex back or reattract them, at least get them to where they'll have a discussion with you to see if this can work. Then you know at least you have a plan and you can review that plan. Repetition is such a big help to anxiety. And so maybe it's that, or maybe it's a situation where you need to do a worst case scenario, likely scenario, and best case scenario, where at least you have it down on paper and you feel there's some element of understanding and control of the situation. Now, ultimately, we don't have control of many things at all in our world, our life. Control to large degree is an illusion. But in terms of at least expectation and the odds and likelihood, that's something that can be comforting because we need to try to live things one second at a time, one day at a time, as best we can. And so when we try to go out too far into the future, that's where we're letting anxiety build up because we're not made to be able to handle that many days at once, that many weeks at once. We're only really designed to be able to handle a few seconds in front of us. Some people say seven is the upper limit to what we can handle. Seven seconds. And yet most of us live thinking and worrying about things that are days or weeks in front of us. We're not made to handle that. And that's why we have anxiety because it's like we're overwhelmed because we cannot handle that much time to have to worry with and deal with and think about. So when you write out your plan, when you write out the facts that you know, and you go through and you just have it written down where it's not just all these passing thoughts in your mind that seem to come from nowhere, but you can actually get out that flashcard. Some of the people that I work with will keep flashcards in their pocket and they will read it. And I see people going through some difficult things and they read those flashcards over and over again, the things that they know, what's likely, the positive things. It's a good reminder and it just so that you don't have those doubts where you say, maybe I was wrong about that. If you have a flashcard, with that information on it, it can be so powerful. Repetition is your best friend if you're dealing with anxiety. To remind yourself that you do have a plan, remind yourself of the positives, and you also can even program yourself in some ways. Think about something that you're looking forward to, some event. And maybe if you have social anxiety, you're just looking forward to curling up in your bed with a book or with a tablet and watching a movie or a video or something like that. Think about those things you're looking forward to. Add that to your list so that when you're looking at the plan, you're looking at the positives, you're also going to say things I'm looking forward to, and you're going to have that. And so the more that you remind yourself of this, it begins to lower your anxiety, your blood pressure, your nervousness, and it can get you in a state to where you do have that moment where you think, ah, oh, it's just a nightmare, it's just a bad dream. Give it a try. And just remember that anxiety is not what is happening to you but it is something that is trying to prepare you for what it thinks is danger. And if you can actually begin to help your mind and your emotions to realize that the danger is maybe less than you thought or not even existent at all, or at least that you have a plan for it, you can begin to experience what Dr. Livingstone experienced that probably saved his life. And that was even in the face of this great danger, he was able to be calm. And so hopefully by some of the things that I mentioned in this channel and maybe friends who can help you as well, you can get to that point where when you're dealing with something not nearly as ferocious as a lion attack, where actually there's not much that you can really think of that you can worry about in this situation, maybe you can experience that calmness as well. So think of anxiety as a nightmare during the day and try to tell yourself, maybe even using these exact words, say, it was just a nightmare. <sighs> and take that breath out. See if you don't feel better about it. If you're struggling with anxiety, you can book a coaching call with one of my staff coaches who can help you overcome anxiety, listen to you and guide you through practical ways you can feel better and approach the future 
with much more courage, hope, and peace. Visit MyAnxietyPeace.com. That's MyAnxietyPeace.com to book a coaching call to help you overcome anxiety.